That one republic, the city of canals, the island nation that everybody loves, the most recognizable flag. Hi, today we're going to be covering a republic, which is strange because I don't quite like republics. But Venice, that's an exception. Venice is one of my favorite places in the world. And yeah, it's a republic. I mean, it's a cool republic, and it's kind of like they elect their leader, but as a monarchist, to like a republic, that's really strange. It's like the most respected country in the world. It has so much street rep. It's insane. So how did it get here? What happened to it and why? So, the Roman Empire is falling. Well, the Western Roman Empire, and only the Western Roman Empire, because the Eastern Roman Empire, it's not falling. It becomes the Byzantine Empire. Remember those guys? Yeah, 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 they're definitely going to be important. When the Roman Empire was sacked by barbar barbarians, which is actually not a derogatory term, it's like anyone who's not Roman, technically, so like the king of China, whatever, whatever. So everybody wants to get into the swamp land because they want to escape the barbarians. So they chop down some trees and have a wonderful idea. If they put the trees in the ground, they won't rot. No, they'll petrify, turn into rock, perfect for building houses on. So they literally built Venice from the ground up. That's it. In the year 600, 600, we basically don't even, we think that global warming isn't a thing and it's 2020. They were about 12 miles away from the Lombards and while the rest of Europe wasn't even done with that castle thing, they had an impenetrable wall. For about 150 years, it was like with the Byzantines, but it got some independence under Paolo el Afanastio, which I'm definitely mispronouncing. But unlike most European rulers, he was a Republican leader. Whoa! Yeah, he was elected by the Grand Council, which sounds like something out of Star Wars, but it's actually true. It's a real thing. It's called the Grand Council. It's the Grand Council. It's definitely real. There's also smaller councils, but we're not going to talk a lot about them. But it's so amazing, so liberal for a country to, like, just do that at this point in time. And they could have sided with the Byzantines or the Franks, but nope, they stepped, kept full neutrality, which made their government so stable, like, so stable that they got, they even got themselves a nickname known as the Serene Republic, or La Serissima, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Either way, they were so stable, their government had legendary stability. And that's just one of the pluses to this amazing form of government. When one of the doges kind of just like let France invade it, they did not allow that. They gave them a kick in the pants and secured their independence from now on out. Amazing. The next duke, Duke Patsio, was really involved in culture building. He tried to do a lot of like cultural things, build up the culture and turn it into the Maritime Trading Republic, which it was for thousands of years, for a thousand years, around a thousand years. So, how to get your street rep up? You have to do a heist. A couple of Venetian merchants went down to Alexandria to steal the body of St. Mark. They put him in a case of ham or pork so that the Muslim custom guards wouldn't understand that it wouldn't touch it. And it's amazing that we talk about the Trojan horse. We don't even know about this Venetian thing. Also, he is a symbol. The winged eagle with the Bible is on Venice's flag. So that's kind of cool. That's a fun fact. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Either way, now they, but they were situated in the best place. They had all these trade routes and didn't have to go with the messy central trade routes. But the cherry on top was their access to the Black Sea and the spice trade. They had a lot of colonies in Albania and Croatia. They basically had the Aegean Sea in their pocket for a lot of their history. It's insane. They owned the Mediterranean. And they got a lot of colonies later on, but we'll talk about how they got those colonies. But their biggest thing was that they were willing to trade with anyone. They even traded with the enemies of Crusades, the Muslims and the Turks. It's insane. They were so religiously tolerant, and a little bit of religious tolerance goes a long way. But the best part about this new government was the merchants ran the whole thing. They had all the power. If you were a merchant, you probably had more power than a politician, and this made it that they actually knew what they were doing. 
because they were led by merchants. It's insane that other countries didn't think of it. And they were able to pump out a ship in a day. The Industrial Revolution isn't even that fast. Well, it, it, it is now, but it wasn't. They were able to, like, a galley in a day. And then the sad chapter, the Fourth Crusade. How do I talk about this? It's like, this kind of doomed Venice. Okay, it didn't exactly doom them, but the aftermath, it wasn't very pretty for the Serene Republic. They wanted to have this little prince crown and, like, emperor, but... Yeah, that was not going to go as well as they planned. They ended up sacking Constantinople over three brutal days. They stole wealth, coins, and the horses of St. Mark, which were actually not called the horses of St. Mark. Duh, because they weren't actually Venetian. They were stolen from the Constantinople citadel of Ramosius II. It's kind of cool, but uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about them, just go ahead. I'm not going to talk a lot about them because... I'm not personally interested in them, but I mean, of course, they are kind of cool. I actually went to Venice, saw these guys. It's cool. They're in the Basilica of St. Mark. They took all the islands that, most all of the islands that the Byzantines owned. They didn't bother taking mainland. But the biggest islands they took were Crete and Cyprus. These ginormous trade hubs were insane. And then... 1492, the year that spelled doom. Not only were they at war for their Albanian colony with the Byzantines, a horrible situation to be in, but something bad was going to happen for the Mediterranean trade. Something almost too bad. Yes, we've heard the name before. Christopher Columbus, the man who, in quotes, discovered America. No, he didn't, actually. That was Leif Erikson. He was the first European to be in America, and there were people in America before. Oh, my God. Okay, my rant's over. Yeah, so he discovered America, and all the trade kind of went away from the Mediterranean. And Venice, being Venice, didn't even think that they needed to colonize America, because, well, why would you? And that probably spelt their downfall. Okay, you can imagine a world where they colonized America. I mean, that would be a cool alternate history video, wouldn't it? Actually, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll set up another camp. But the big thing is they actually ended up not colonizing America. The biggest mistake. And it's true. America killed Venice. Nobody would ever kill it, really. Oh, yeah, there's Napoleon. He invaded Italy, sadly. And, uh, well... Venice didn't put up much of a fight. They surrendered their empire to him, and it was kind of over. It's really sad that one man with lots of ambitions could just end a country.